Tonight, we are having a private convo with Mirza Sisan, motivational speaker, confidence coach, former EIC of Cosmo, content creator, and many more. Katulad ng model. <laughs> Good evening, Mirza, and thank Hello. you. Thank you for joining Hi. me I'm here. so happy to be here, finally. I know. We've been talking <laughs> about this many for attempts. so long. Yes. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Okay, first question. Super diamond gila go I know. How do you how you how do you do all of these? I don't know. <laughs> I just go from point A to point B. Basta my motto is life is short, join ng ng join, which is you know my um, motto for like that has served me for as long as uh, I have had many careers when I was a model. The mm -hmm. that was the mantra of our game mentors. Join ng ng join. Don't overthink it. Join ng ng join. Which is essentially uh, say yes to every opportunity because you never know. So to this day, it's a motto that served me well. And join ng ng join. So, Doc mm -hmm. Rica calls, join lang ng join. Join ng ng right. join. Private uh -oh. convos with Doc Rica. Rin, pero <laughs> I'm glad. Because when you look back on your life, you'll be glad that you said yes to everything. Yeah, so yes to everything. Ah. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. So, syempre naman, Align with your goals. Mm -hmm. Hindi naman everything na not align. Uh, so, but, may boundaries pa uh, Or if it opens up possibilities that you never thought you wanted, but hey, maybe there's something there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, game. Ah, <laughs> how old were you when you started modeling? I was, uh, it, I started late because most models start in their teens. Mm -hmm. I was already 21. So, I was late na yon. Late na yon for a model because usually. Teens, eh. so uh, I was already a computer programmer at SGV and Company. What? When I decided <laughs> to give it all up to become a model. I'm yes. so confused. You heard right. I'm confused too. Yes. So, yon. so what happened? What made you take that around? I attribute it all to child burnout because oh. I had helicopter parents who. Mm -hmm. um, kind of planned my life for me and when they noticed maybe that I had special advanced abilities they kind of pushed me to excel and to to join lang nang join such that I entered a science high school at age 11 I finished high school at 14 and entered UP took up statistics from the age of 14 to 18 so you can imagine by the time Burn I was 18 Burnout and gusto ko na lang magtrabaho na walang iniisip, which is modeling. Because I had a fantasy life. I lived inside the pages of Vogue magazine and other fashion magazines. Mm. So in my fantasy world, I was a model. But in my day-to-day -day world, as a computer programmer. So you can imagine the drastic change yes. in um, milieu mm -hmm. and skills that mm -hmm. it took. But I did it. So... And there. it's like you actually lived your fantasy. I did. And how was that for you? I may open that eyes a sexual fantasy. Spare now. Yes. Like, how was that for you? Uh, my dad owns book sale. Mm. I'm sure you're familiar yes. with. So uh, in my teen years, that was when he was starting book sale. So I had access to all the magazines and books mm. um, that I could get my hands on. So I was it reared by Women's magazines like fashion magazines, there's mm -hmm. Cosmopolitan, Marie mm -hmm. Claire, even Miss Magazine. So I was like a feminist at age 12. So parang because of this exposure and because of all the books that I read, I knew that there were possibilities beyond my little bubble. Mm -hmm. So I think it opened my mind at an early age about, you know, the, there are different ways for people to live. There are different lifestyles you can aspire to live. There are different occupations. You know, mm. pretty much if there's something you want to do, it's possible. And in fact, as such an introverted child uh, and teenager, that's practically invisible in high school. So you're thinking, how can that little nerdy girl become a model? Mm -hmm. I, I owe it all to a book named Shyness. The title of the Shyness. book. Shyness. Shyness by Dr. Philip Zimbardo. Oh, he wow. was a psychologist. Yes. This is now a, a cult classic. It's mm -hmm. being printed to this day. And he... Uh, he, parang his main premise, the main premise of the book was 
Just as you have convinced yourself that you are shy, you can convince yourself that you are not shy. So, um, and he gave tools like, you know, kind of like uh, act as if and you will be. But I'm fake it till mm -hmm. you make it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I entered college, I said, hey, nobody knows me here. They don't know that I'm the invisible nerdy girl mm -hmm. who can't even speak. So I said, okay, I shall act as if. I were an assertive, outgoing student leader, and then yeah. it worked. And so that gave me, uh, parang proof that if you set your mind to it, and if you, you know, um, keep abreast of some self help, you can achieve anything. Yeah. So parang that gave me the that empowered me. Now I want to be a model. Then I can learn the skills. Then I can find out how I can do it. I don't even know how I found. The people that I needed, that, that you know, the, I know, the world that I needed to penetrate. Because there's no internet. Computer na. engineer, ka tas biglang model. There's no internet. Na, but yes. somehow I found my way, and then I navigated that world. Um, learned the skills. I couldn't even walk in heels, mm -hmm. but then nagawa ko siya. Sobrang palpak ng first fashion show ko. Muntik na ako madapa. I had a tag hanging from my dress. Luckily, I still got booked. You know, hindi naman ako na ban for the kapalpakan. And then I learned that. You know, fail fast and fail forward. Oh, that's so nice. And I've fail used fast, this fail forward. In my next few reinventions, like you can be whatever you wanna be. Aralin mo lang, just mm -hmm. practice it. Um, network, penetrate the world that you want to dominate or mm -hmm. navigate, and then you can do this. <laughs> I think what's like important with what you said, because you started with yung parang fake it till you make yes. it. But then you also said, aralin mo lang. Yes. Because you cannot just fake no, it all the no. time, right? Yes, that's the caveat. Mm. Fake it till you make it, and then once you're there, you have to deliver. Yes. You know, you cannot be, uh, you cannot be an imposter. You mm -hmm. can have imposter syndrome, but you cannot be an imposter. So you really have to be so competent you have to match your confidence with your competence because you're faking uh. the confidence, right? But if you don't have the competence to back it up, you're not going to last. It's going to be like arrogance. Yes. Like, parang walang laman. Yes. Yes. What do they call it? Um, the lata? Ah. Maingay na lata. Oh, Something okay. Something like that. Oh, na walang talaga. laman. Yes. Pala. yes. I think it's also the dunning kruger effect uh -huh. diba? yes and so, also there's a book called mm -hmm. uh, why so many incompetent men become world leaders <laughs> why let's because talk they're about so it confident and they don't have the competence to back it up meanwhile a lot of women are very competent but, but they don't have the confidence exuding confidence to me exactly so. because there's also like a lot of there a lot of double standards yes. into it that when women become Assertive when they right. become confident. Yeah. Bigla rubbish. silang ah, bigla ay ang sungit naman Bossy. yan. Ay ganyan, diba? Magalit yes. ka lang ng onte. It's a point against you. Right. But exactly. with men, may sabihin sila. They're oh, expected they're just, to act that yes, way. They're just yes. being strict. They're just yes. uh, boss kasi yan eh. Yes. So nandun na yung double standards. So maramit pa tayong trabaho ng I know. <laughs> and speaking of double standards, you were in the modeling industry. And the but during that time, ibang iba siya uh -huh. with how it is now. Right. So how did you handle that? How did you handle how people see women during that time? Right, right. Uh, in our in the industry, it was not. I don't know about other countries, but in this country, it was not misogynistic. Maybe because the industry is very. Uh, Gay dominated, uh, so parang we felt safe. Uh -oh. uh, I didn't really feel any kind of uh, parang harassment. Harassment, or maybe one or two mm -hmm. like male clients who would make innuendos mm -hmm. or like especially kung bawa. There was one parang owner of a lingerie company. It's a story for another day, yeah. but may mga ganon. But we we. Learn to look out for each other. We had a professional models association of the Philippines, and mm -hmm. so this helped us, you know, keep things safe, have uh, standards, you know, mm -hmm. have rules to protect each other. So, yeah. So that's a difference. Because yes. you're the PMAP a is still here. 
dominated. Uh-huh. So, hindi masyadong yes. rampant yung, yes. yung toxic masculinity, right, misogynism. Right, right. Yeah. Well, at least I didn't feel it. Yeah. yeah. And then after modeling, you went into the yes. magazine. Yes. After uh, a seven-year career in modeling here and mm-hmm. around Asia, mm-hmm. I was shopping for a new transition career. And so, I realized that I loved uh, writing. Well, mm-hmm. I loved writing as as early as childhood, but my mm-hmm. parents said, no, mm-hmm. all the writers will be. It was the Marcos regime, so they said all the writers mm-hmm. will be jailed. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. So Naka don't be a writer. Mm-hmm. Be a computer programmer. <laughs> diba? Yan ang plan nila for me. But I love writing. And so uh, I said, I think I want to be a writer or an editor. Mm-hmm. So I just spread a rumor na writer ako. <laughs> <laughs> and you fake it till you make it. Yeah, no. so, no, hey, writer, writer so ako. sa mga fashion clients, uh-uh. hey, if you need press release, writer mm-hmm. ako. They're like, mm-hmm. okay, meron namang naniwala. <laughs> and so, I became a writer. Eventually, uh, I got a weekly column in the Philippine Star, which oh. led to me becoming the first fashion editor of Preview Magazine, the first title of Summit Media. So, that's how my career started. From Preview, I went mm-hmm. on to be the launch editor of Cosmopolitan. In so you launched Cosmo. Yes, in oh my God! Were you born in 1997? Of course. Yes. <laughs> I, I always have to 11. ask. <laughs> it's already 11. I, I, I yeah. always have to ask. My Cosmo na sa harap ko no. Yes. So I was the launch time. editor of Cosmo in 97, and we were very um, kind of uh, a little bit afraid because. Uh, we didn't know kung anong magiging reaction. This was a time 97 na yon, ha. I mean, uh-huh. it's not like the 1900s. 97 na yon, and still, um, sex was not discussed openly. Mm-hmm. It was quite taboo. Hello, I, 2023 na yon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, 30 years <laughs> after <laughs> <ganun ka rin. laughs> It's a final uh-huh. frustration. So anyway, there was a um, uh, what's it? influential religious group at the mm. time who was passing around uh, a petition to mm. advertisers saying that uh, we're gathering signatures to petition uh, banning Cosmo from entering the country because it's immoral, blah, 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 blah. Not so as an editor, I thought, when I show up for work, will somebody throw a grenade at me? Yeah, <laughs> will yeah. there be like mass protests? Mm-hmm. No such thing happened. Advertisers, you know, supported it, and it was a hit. So it was a hit. It was always sold out, and so I thought, women are buying it because they need the information. Yes. So it came at the right time, and it was such a big success, and it still is today. Angela. Almost thirty years later. I know. I didn't know that you were the launch <laughs> yes, editor of Cosmo. You grew up with books. You grew up with yes. magazines, yes. and this is like quite an achievement for you. To launch that here in the Philippines, where I have like a a hanging question, because you grew up with magazines, and yes. every time I hear people talk about magazines when they were young, they would talk about Penthouse. <laughs> they would talk about <laughs> magazine ng daddy nila, <laughs> de ba? They, they would talk about these things, and then they yes. would say that they learned sex from these magazines. Did you see those magazines lying around? I saw up? them lying around, mm-hmm. but it's not how I learned about sex. Luckily, there was Cosmo mm-hmm. already, so I learned it from a woman's point of view and not from the male gaze. Uh, also, my mother, sorry ma, to out you, she had a copy of The Joy of Sex by Dr. Alex oh, Comfort yes. in her closet. <laughs> <laughs> so I would rummage through and read it in secret. It was heavily illustrated. How old were you then? Maybe 12, 11 ah. or 12. So that was like a source of information also. So, I was just sa information. When it comes to sex. That's why yes. you were the perfect person to launch yes. Cosmo here. Well, little did I know. But that's why Steve Jobs said, you can only connect the dots looking backward. I Actually, didn't know that. that, that so true. You know, being the child of the owner of book sale and the access to all these materials mm-hmm. would prepare me for a life of editing magazines. I so, know. connected pala siya. Ang galing! Oh, so galing! <laughs> and parang seeing that now, yes. you see your purpose then and your meaning. Right, right? right. But how was it like for you? As you were parang listening to you now, it sounds like you were open already open-minded yes. growing up, right? Yes. There were no conservatism. Well, my mother was kind of conservative. My dad mm-hmm. was not. 
Mm -hmm. And it was sex was not discussed openly. Mm -hmm. In fact, beliefs about preserving one's virginity as a gift to the husband mm -hmm. was kind of like imparted to us daughters. Mm -hmm. But it was too late because by then, indoctrinated na kami with nah, the information. Uh -oh. So imagine we're just giggling about mm -hmm. you know such things. So I, it's really knowledge from credible. Um, reliable information that opened my mind and educated me about sex. Mm -hmm. So such that when I was uh, a model who was starting in the modeling industry, so I had a lot of modeling friends, diba? and models exude sexual confidence. Yes. Diba? That's mm -hmm. what they're paid to do, to look mm -hmm. sexy and glamorous and, you know, um, hot. So it didn't really match their mindsets. Yes. So in fact, Ako yung naging tanungan ng bayan amongst my model friends. And there was one girl in particular who, after reading one of my books, I'd bring my books about sex and, you know, mm. information to rehearsals. And upon reading one chapter in the book about orgasms, umiyak siya. Huh. I said, bakit ka umiyak? Apparently, up until that point, all she felt during sex was pain. Oh. She had no idea. That what, it can be that pleasure. That you can have an orgasm, that it's for pleasure and not just for the man's pleasure. Yes. And so I realized, oh my God, how many more like you are like this? A lot. Tapad na na. And this was in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe that was planting the seeds. This was like six years before I would come to edit Cosmo. Mm -hmm. But then it planted the seed in me na. How many people are ignorant and misinformed? And my gosh, they're really being denied a wealth of information yes. that could help them live a better life. Yeah, a more fulfilling life. Yes. A fulfilling life that they can embody and embrace right. their womanhood. Because where do Filipinos learn about sex if they're not well-read, right? Mm -hmm. And pre-internet. Mm -mm. From hearsay, or porn, from no jokes, or porn. So it can make for a very skewed yes. um, kind of level of information. Uh -uh. And I like what you said, because that's so true, that like growing up, even... During my my time, di naman tayong kakalayo. But we really don't talk about sex, yes. even our parents, right? Yes. Not at and all. it resonated with me when you said that you were planting the seeds early on, right? Because how did you manage? How did you say to yourself that okay, I think I need to talk about this. I think I need to like um, teach. My well, I would I would teach my friends very casually because mm -hmm. ako na naging tanuan, uh -oh. and I had very informed answers. So they're mm -hmm. like, "Oh, ganon pala yon." It was not until Cosmo came about, then I realized this can be a platform for helping so many Pinay. So uh -huh. it was really my mission from the day that Cosmo launched until today mm -hmm. to empower Filipinas to live the best lives they could. Be. In every aspect of your life. High five! It's still going on today. Yes. And nakakadismaya na may mga ganyang attitudes pa rin. Well, sobrang diba? dami. So, yeah. Sobrang dami. Nakakagulat nga eh. But, uh, you know, I think for those who are well-read, yung nagkaroon ng tamang yes. information, now they have more open minds. The but, thing is, ang dami ng information available to everyone. But you don't And know how to see. Because it's probably not curated. Yes. So, mm -hmm. sorry to plug Cosmo, and even if I'm no longer with Cosmo, it's a great source of curated information. Yes, <laughs> I, I was. I'm thinking um, Cosmo, deba, and then you had those like columns, like really talking about sex, talking about masturbation. Margie Holmes had a column. Yes, in Cosmo, talking about all these things that you never talked about before. How did that affect you as a woman? How did that? affect you going out there and how people perceive you and how did you take that uh i guess i was maybe i uh, know are you asking if natakot ba ako that people will perceive me a certain way by that being uh -huh. the editor of cosmo uh -huh. i think by that time i was already i already had self-awareness i was already self-realized mm -hmm. plus my perspective was very global mm -hmm. so hindi ko na siya, i didn't really get affected by whatever anyone would say like for example at a party some friends tita mm -hmm. na belonging to a religious group mm -hmm. would you know kind of like be aghast like 
why naman are you editing Cosmo? Parang, grabe naman yan. But I, by that time, I was 27 years old. Mm. Or maybe mga 29 years old. By that time, I had such a strong sense of self and sense of mission mm-hmm. and sense of purpose to have the confidence to embrace my role and to carry out my mission. Mm-hmm. Parang ganon. So parang feeling ko, well, I know where they're coming from. They're coming from a place of uh, whatever information they have, but I'm coming from a different place. So mm-hmm. hindi ko siya, uh, it didn't affect me in a negative way. Or, so you just you like, know, you just took it. I didn't become yeah. defensive either. Even mm-hmm. like comments like, Bakit wala ka pang anak? Mm-hmm. Diba? Sayang ka naman. Diba? Some people are offended. Kaya lang ka magkakaanak. Some uh, single women are offended and then they become defensive. For me, natatawa lang ako talaga. Kasi in my mind, they don't know what they're saying. They're uh-huh. coming from a place of yun lang ang sense of fulfillment ng mm-hmm. babae. But I'm coming from a broader worldview and the knowledge that it's not a lifestyle choice for everyone. Motherhood mm-hmm. is not the end all and be all. So the more you know, the more maybe tolerant or non-defensive you are about mm-hmm. whatever people will think. Maybe a- accepting too yes. that that's their mind. Yes. I mean, that's their mindset. That's yes. how they see the world. Okay. Yes. I just saw, I yes. only saw it as there's a lot of work to be done oh, to yeah. change minds <gasps> and to broaden their perspectives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a fight. No, it's a fight. I know. You it's know, like, what What uh, irks me is I, I get DMs from Gen mm. Zs and Millennials when they find out that I got married at the age of 42. They say mm. things like, Pwede pala yun? So, ko, bakit hindi sinong nagsabing hindi, hindi pwede? pwede? Mami ko. Kasi the moms are pushing them to follow, pressuring them to follow the timetable the for time table woman, of time diba? table for a woman get married by this mm-hmm. time, have children by this time, such and such and such. And then, parang nakakadismaya na their moms are readers of Cosmo, na bakit hindi sila naging progressive? Why are they inflicting on their daughters what their mothers inflicted on them? On them. And not, not just their daughters, even their sons. Oh, even so their sons. So all these narratives, oh it's very intergenerational, perpetuating oh narratives tayo. So, Napaka-important yun, no? so, sons. <laughs> sobrang daming trabaho na kailangan gawin. But we're not saying na, okay, tayo lang yung nagtatrabaho. Madami yes. naman. Yes, yes. It's just really about opening up these conversations yes. and telling them that, hey, you know, we're here too. I'm very right? proud of the Gen Zs mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, they're fearless about Open up, opening up conversations about mm-hmm. it. They're fearless about calling out mm-hmm. people who they think are still stuck in non-progressive mm-hmm. views. So, galeng. I have a question. What made you decide to marry at 42? I didn't decide to marry at 42. In fact, I wanted to never get married. Exactly. <laughs> I was thinking of that. Eh? <laughs> what, made, so what made you say? I'm it? so fulfilled that I had a yes. gay best friend. Uh-huh who passed away um, at the age of 48. But around uh, my late 30s and 40s, I so fulfilled na even if I never married, because mm-hmm. I, I was I had decided that I didn't want children at age 21. Ah, Alam ko na. Ako right. <laughs> at 16, I said, I'm going to have a child at okay, Maybe it's because <laughs> ako yung pangana, and then I raised all the ah. younger siblings. So parang... There was no rush. There's no biological mm-hmm. clock that's ticking. So I said, even if I never marry and JR, my gay best friend, is my lifetime companion with his dog, I'll be perfectly happy. Mm-hmm. And then I met my husband, Andre. Yeah. He ruined my plans. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He ruined my plans. You know, he was so amazing and incredible and i didn't think they made men that way anymore oh and they're so, so <laughs> I'll, I'll ask the question again <laughs> what made you decide to marry? i cannot pinpoint it to mm-hmm. um any specific factor but it was just a feeling and an urge mm-hmm. na parang, i want to be with him forever and i know that you know a marriage certificate does not guarantee that, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't know. But yeah, I just had to do it. 
legal purposes? I don't know. <laughs> no, I, that's what I'm like, I'm so curious about. Because you're, you're such a woman of conviction. Yes. The yes. Like, I want to do this, I will do it. Yes. I don't want to get married, I'm not going to get yes. married. But something changed. Probably legal purposes, although I, that wasn't my impetus back then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Meeting him changed it. Ah. Yeah. I wanna <laughs> ask, but I'm, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask. Say in my head, was it the sex? <laughs> of course, kasali yon, de ba? Alang na namang hindi. <laughs> how was that like for you? Like, uh, how how's the intimate life for you, having a husband at that age? Because usually, de ba? Sabi mga may timeline. Uh -uh. So what people know, what people experience, like bata pa lang sila, magkasama na sila, uh -uh. and tama, tama. but meeting this person at an age that you're right. more mature, right. you're more confident about yes. yourself. How's that? I always tell people uh, the forties is the perfect age to marry. <laughs> In fact, I always um, tell people. Don't get married before you're 30. Kasi hindi ka pa taong buo. <laughs> Oo. Totoo naman, di ba? 27 years old ka na nabubuo yung brain yes. mo. Yes. Uh -oh. Is that a scientific fact? Yes, it okay. is. Like, okay. I can quote that. Okay. Physiologically, your brain um, develops. So, the prefrontal cortex, which is um, which is for decision making. Oh. Doon lang siya na ko completely okay. develop once you're 27. I saw sight that... That information. Yes, uh, more so in the Philippines where people are children until they leave the house, which is maybe never, mm -hmm. right? So Even when they're married, they're still children. I think the maturity is <laughs> kind of arrested, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, at that age, sobrang buong tao na ako fulfilled, nagawa ko na ng gusto ko, di ba? The sense of self-awareness and self-realization is um, so sufficient that you are your own person, you're an individual. Mm -hmm. um, you attract like-minded people, mm -hmm. right? You're not gonna fall for somebody na hindi pa taong buo. Hindi pa taong buo. <laughs> Kasi problema Para lang pa yan. Siya. <laughs> but just to uh, clarify, I was six. I am six years older than my husband, but mm -hmm. he's very mature. Mm -hmm. So when we got married, I was forty-two, and he was. 37, five, five to six years. Mm -hmm. But then he was very mature. He's very taong buo na siya. <laughs> very taong buo na siya. Plus, ano siya, uh, Phil M. Mm -hmm. Not saying mas mature ang Phil M, but mm -hmm. this one, more mature. Parang, baka more liberal and I mean, progressive more, more in terms progressive, of More progressive, more independent. Yeah. Uh, more life experience, more variety of life experience, mm -hmm. maybe. So, mm -hmm. yun. Parang to this day, Feeling ko mag boyfriend girlfriend pa rin kami kasi oh. we don't have traditional roles. Maybe not being parents also um, gave you that freedom to do gives whatever you want. Gives you the freedom want. to uh -huh. you know take off whenever, de ba? Mm -hmm. Or you know not be. I want to be Parang careful with stop. my words. I don't want to be. You I don't want to use encumbered. But <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Uh, Burdened. Uh, required. <laughs> yeah, obliged. <laughs> right. right. And plus, at that age, you know, you really seek your equal. Yes. Mental equal. Uh -oh. um, success equal. Mm -hmm. So, it's more egalitarian. There's less imbalance of power, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's also very important. That, I mean, even for our viewers, too. Yes, yes, yes. Know that when you... Try to look for a partner. Yes. It should be someone who's not necessarily equal, yeah. but you know that there's a balance yes. of power. Hindi yung palagi ka right. takot sa kanya, right. Right. or palagi siyang takot sa yo, right. or siya lang yung nasusunod. Kung may takot, medyo red flag yun. <laughs> oh, oh, di ba? Oh. And I think, I mean, in my job as a sex and relationships therapist, that's what I see in couples. I think the couples that right. I work with, yung may takot sila sa isa't isa because there's no safe space right. that you can so just important. say yes. whatever you want to say without disrespecting the yes. other. Yes, so and that's uh, you know part of the list of questions. That's true intimacy when you have mm -hmm. a safe space where you can be honest and vulnerable. You're not afraid of being judged. Yes. You can tell them anything and everything. You're not going to censor or play games or like, Sugarcoat, and then it's such an easy defend. existence. Because parang parang best friend mo talaga, but uh -oh. you're intimate with them. So uh -oh. speaking of best friend yes. and your intimate, yes. With them. So how for you? Uh, 
for you being editor of Cosmo, you growing up being progressive and sex. I want to teach about sex. Right. How important is sex for you? Of course, very important. <laughs> <laughs> Para ka pa na editor of Cosmo. Um, sex is a intrinsic and healthy part of our human existence. In mm. fact, the World Health Organization um, says that sex is a human right. It's a right. <laughs> It's a human yeah. right, so we have the pleasure right to pleasure. Right. Mm -hmm. We should never be shamed for wanting pleasure, so mm -hmm. it's quite important. And it can be a barometer of how you are um, faring in terms of your dynamic together. Mm -hmm. So, very important. And when you say important, is it more on the quality or the quantity? Um, I think quality, because as we age and as our lives get busier, uh, mm -hmm. It's hard to hope for the twenty something kind of frequency. <laughs> yeah, every day. <laughs> Nina, Nina. Every day and even within uh -oh. a day. <laughs> so how do you show intimacy um with your husband? Like with each other? We're very affectionate. Mm -hmm. Uh there's not a day goes by that we're not affectionate with each other. We um obviously have a deep connection. We have a sense of humor that we share. Uh it's a deep connection that goes beyond the physical. So mm -hmm. even if our bodies change, our facial features change, and everything like falls down to the floor, we still find each other sexy. So if you have that deep connection that you develop through true intimacy and sharing your vulnerability and being honest and being like a unit mm -hmm. and in a partnership together, knowing everyone, knowing each other's um, ups and downs, that really solidifies your bond and it can transcend, you know, abs or <laughs> firm body parts. Yeah, yeah. So it transcends the physical. Yes, it transcends the physical. Um, how does he arouse mirrors us? Oh my gosh. Yanang sinasabi ko mo. Andre, how do you arouse me down? Yeah. With his mind. He's mm -hmm. such a smart man. And when you're smart, you are good with communicating. Mm -hmm. So he's very good with words, and so am I. So you can imagine that the banter is very stimulating. And so that's yeah. where it starts. That's where it starts. That's, where it, that's starts. where it starts. I also want to know. Would you know if he was ever like intimidated by you, by who you are, the things <laughs> you've achieved? I guess not, uh -huh. because we're together. <laughs> and I used to say back then, before I met him, so I was single, mm -hmm. and then whenever people would say, oh, the problem with you or whoever is that you're so intimidating yeah. and you scare men away, and Good I one. would always retort, then those are not the men that we would like. Exactly. If they are intimidated by you before they even meet you, what more when you're together? So That's right. It's not it's, intimidated. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to be responsible for his ego. Yes. And you don't want, no one no. wants that. Because no you're going to shortchange that. yourself. You're, mm -hmm. you're always going to stop yourself from achieving. Baka sobra na to, baka may insecure. Mm -hmm. So, hindi yung achievement mo ang source of insecurity niya. Kundi, insecure siya. <laughs> insecure siya, period. Uh -huh. And hindi dapat, hindi nga uh -huh. dapat ngayon, parang you will cower. Yes. Uh, ba Parang yes. ibababa mo yung sarili mo no. para dun sa no. partner mo. Wow. When it can be that you can grow together and yes. support each other. Mutual support for each other's growth mm -hmm. and continuous growth as you age together is so vital. Mm -hmm. And if one stops the other from growing, it's really not a good sign. Yeah. So what do you do if one stops the other from growing? I think you need to pay attention, see what the problem is, you know, really thresh it out and see where the source of fear is coming from, talk mm -hmm. it over, like, diba, uh, any kind of, they say any kind of anger or resentment comes from a source of fear. What yeah. are they afraid will happen? Uh -uh. Will happen to you together, right? Like, oh, if you go so high up in the ladder, I'm, uh, I am afraid that, what? What? Diba? Yeah, what will happen? Then spell it out. Yeah. What will happen? And then mm -hmm. you can maybe alleviate the fears and say, no, that's not going to happen. Sa dalawang buong tao na nagkita, di ba? Ano yung usually yung pinag-aawayan niyo? 
Kami? Yes! <laughs> I think, ano na lang, uh, personality traits, like... Like? MBTI. But... <laughs> <laughs> I am the most punctual person. Mm-hmm. He is not. <laughs> Kita pala yung aking uh, masking tape. Oh, okay. Sorry, ako. I'm the most punctual person. He is not. Mm-hmm. I like to be at the airport three hours ahead mm-hmm. in case of uh, force majeure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he likes to arrive and get on the plane. So this makes for a lot of like conflict, <laughs> conflict, no, no, and no, no. stress. He calls yeah. it the season travel panic. Because oh. coming buong pamilya, we're very OC about time. Yeah. And then sila medyo in their family, they're not. So yun lang naman. <laughs> so how do you? How do you manage that? Uh, I remember the first time we traveled together. Sa so sobra kong fear na malilate kami. Nilabas ko na lahat ng maleta, pero naliligo pa lang siya. Oh. <laughs> so, pinatay ko na lahat ng ilaw and you're still in the shower. He's Iniwan like, mo ba siya? Hey, I'm still in the shower. So, naisip ko, iiwan ako na lang ba siya? But we're going on this trip together. <laughs> so, ano yung point? So, compromise. Mm-hmm. Di ba? There are ways around it. Like, um, maybe I'll pad the time para mas maaga. <laughs> yeah, if uh, advance mo. <laughs> uh, or, for him naman, maybe, um, He'll also try to, you know, not be so late. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm an executive coach and I've mm-hmm. tried to coach him. I think it doesn't work to coach your spouse. <laughs> it really doesn't. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. <laughs> it will lead to resentment. Because yes. there's uh, an eh, imbalance of power. Yes. Why are you taking away my agency? Yes. And then he's on to me all the time. He's like, are you coaching me right now? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's an honor. No? That's the professional hazard. Yeah. When you're a therapist or when you're yes. a coach, they would try to yeah. acceptance na rin mm-hmm. na kung gusto niya maging maaga, siyang kailangan gumusto noon. Hindi ako. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Aside from that, ano pa yung mga pinag-aaway? I think through the years, it's just you know, clarifying communication styles. Mm-hmm. So sometimes if there's a fight and then it gets talked about and clarified, it often comes out that it's not what you said, it's the way you said it. Ah, or, so or, it's like there's a misunderstanding yes. along the way. So we learn skills also, like, you know, don't start with you statements, yes. start with I statements. Uh-huh. So just, the, just uh, the other night, I think I said something snarky. And I said, like what? Uh, what did I say? I think I said, parang I'm, I'm, I've been missing him because we're both so busy. I think I said, uh, if I cook food for you, will you sit down and talk to me? Oh, and then, that's passive aggression. <laughs> you know, I just came out. I wasn't even cognizant that you were saying So, parang na ano siya, sabi hmm. niya. Maybe there's a better way to say that. <laughs> what is? What are you insinuating that hmm. I don't talk to you? So hmm. I said. I just miss you. He said, you could have started with that. So, yes. mga ganyan lang. Aww. Mga ganyan lang. So, parang kung meron kang gustong iparating, yes. iparating mo ng maayos. Yes. Hindi yung... Hindi yung insinuating Oo. or parang may nilalaman. So, I guess... Magpaparinig. Parang yung <laughs> culture, that's it, eh, di ba? Paparinig Uh-oh. ka. Yes, Uh-oh. yes, yes. May mga tampo ba kayo? Kasi yun din yung nasa culture natin that I'm trying to understand. Right. Yung mga tampuhan na... Hindi mo papansinin yung ah, sa afterward. I think with the two of us, hindi na pwedeng tumagal. Mm-hmm. Kasi when you're older, parang ano ba yan? Sayang lang yung time. Mm-hmm. ba? Diba? Ayusin na kaagad para maka-move on. Dahil kung hindi, what is the silent treatment achieving? Diba? Nothing. Parang it's just adding more damage when mm-hmm. you can just sort it out and see what you can do better. So, sayang lang yun. Wag na patagalin. Oo. And I think that's also like part of midlife, no? When you yes. reach midlife, you realize that time is limited. Yes. So, wala nang drama. Yeah. Parang, what is the drama for? Right. Wala I mean, are again. you still gonna play games? Yeah. You know, you wanna have the upper hand, but it's mm-hmm. not a contest. You're in it together, di ba? It's not a competition, so. Yeah. I think that's important. Very important. When you're in a partnership, it's seeing it as... Like, you're a team? Like, yeah. you're not in the competition? We're, we're a team. What is our Aww. common goal? It's yes. not to win. Because <laughs> yeah. win against one. Yeah. Nothing. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Ang galing nun. Uh-huh. And I think, yun nga yung mga matututunan mo. And you already have. Kapag 
Ang kasama mo ay taong buo. Taong buo po. <laughs> taong buo. Buuhin po natin ang katawan natin. Pero dahil taong buo, before ka naging taong buo, let's go back to the shyness part. Yes. Have you ever been sexually ashamed? Ah, I remember I was five years old. Mm-hmm. I was in ballet class. So in ballet, you wear a leotard and tights. Mm-hmm. And then a little, an older boy said to me, Hey there, you're sexy. <gasps> and I remember at five years old, feeling ashamed. I, I didn't understand what was going on. I felt ashamed. I felt like he sexy shamed me. Uh-uh. But I, you know, I'm a five-year-old girl in the mm. leotard and tights. So parang, I still remember that feeling. I started avoiding that boy. I started mm. avoiding field trips where I knew that boy would be ah, there. So it really affected, it affected you. Me. I wanted to stop ballet class. Ah. I couldn't really. I don't know if I told my mom if she acknowledged it or maybe I didn't even tell her. But mm-hmm. that is my earliest uh, remembrance of being. I guess what is the term? Cut called or uh-uh. yeah, at shame for my old. body at five years old. So if a five year old can feel that shame. What more if you develop and become, you know? So how did you? What did you do with that shame growing up? It it went away, you know. It went away. I mm-hmm. continued to dance ballet, and then I realized that, yeah, he was stupid. He was wrong. You know, <laughs> this is nothing. You know. Gano na lang eh, no? uh, diba? na lang. I guess you actually, learn in time. Na. Actually, ito ayon, because like even now, diba, There are a lot of people who catcall right, women, right, right, and usually right. you think of them. They don't know any better. Yes. But if you just set them aside, given right. that we want to educate, right. hindi talaga sila matututo. Right, right, right. So we do what we can. Yes. And knowing, parang, knowing what you've been through with that, na you were ashamed of your yes, body. Yes. How did you find your confidence again? I know it went away, right. but like with your body as a woman, right. not being judged by others, being that sexy person. How did you find that? I, a lot of a lot of what helped was my exposure talaga to information. Mm-hmm. I guess if you live in the world of magazines, you know that, you know, fashion, clothes, you know, let's say wearing swimsuits, diba? You see Sports Illustrated, swimmer, swimmer mm-hmm. edition, you see top models mm-hmm. flaunting the beauty of their bodies. Mm-hmm. Then you see that it's a positive thing, you know. It's mm-hmm. nothing to be ashamed of. It's glamorous, diba? So, ganun yung naging effect sa'yo. I think ganun yung naging because, effect. Because, diba, for others naman, they become insecure of their bodies yes. because they're different from what they see yes. Maybe from it the helped magazines. that I had the body type of the models ah, in the magazines. So, you like But it. in the long run, now that we are more aware of body positivity mm-hmm. and um, um, promoting unrealistic standards i feel mm-hmm. a lot of guilt for being part of an industry at that time mm-hmm. which uh, upheld that body ideal above others mm-hmm. in the name of fitness mm-hmm. in the name of being the best you can be mm-hmm. only now can i see uh, how harmful that might have been to young minds mm-hmm. Like the Cosmo cover was always a slender girl, mm-hmm. <laughs> of a certain body type. Even if they were celebrities, celebrities were pressured to be as thin as yes. they could. And I can't help but feel that I helped promote this unwittingly. How are you rectifying it? Um, I try, and I always speak about that. I always talk about my guilt, and I always, you know, try and be more open-minded and support. Mm-hmm. All types of um, beauty and diversity. How do you, like, what can you tell women who are not confident in their bodies? Because I know a lot of women right now who can't even, like, touch themselves like this, much huh. more masturbate. Okay. You can give right, themselves right, right. a hug because they're so right. not comfortable with their bodies. Right. Because of that, the beauty right. standards, that's right. not I mean, sugar-coated, right? Right, right, right. So what can you tell them? Uh, again, I go back to knowledge is power, and I think the more you read about what you are going through, why do you feel this way, what is the root of this shame or this mm-hmm. fear or um, your inhibitions, 
it will really help open up your mind to see like from um, reading about science and mm -hmm. you know evidence-based information so it's really like accurate information accurate information and not just mm -hmm. go with feelings mm -hmm. I think talking about it with a professional will, will really help, help such yeah. as you because you know if they're in the dark about it and they have no kind of information that might enlighten them, they're really going to be stuck oh. there, especially if they live in a bubble of tradition and conservatism. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the answers from It's really there. going out there and learning. Yes. The more you learn, learn, the more you will understand who you are and yes. the more confident you will be yes. to embrace who you are. And right? really dig deep, uh -huh. do the inner work. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can be happy if you... Really I don't know, naturally for us. Because know a lot of yourself. Us don't want to put in yes. the effort. Or even like mm -hmm. knowing your body parts. I remember uh, I had a friend mm -hmm. who said, I want to start using tampons. Mm -hmm. So she said, can I have one? Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, here. The next day she came back. I don't know where to put it. The tampons. Where do I put it in the hole where I pee? Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that's your urethra. Have you never looked at your... Vagina yeah. with a mirror. Mm -hmm. No, why would I do that? Okay, then you can't even use a tampon. And I'm like, oh my god, please read Cosmo. <laughs> Pero yun din yun. Madame sa oh, atin, oh. they can't even. They just the thought of looking at the vulva um, with a mirror. Nahihirapan sila because they feel like it's dirty. But that's oh a whole goodness. other story. In 2023. I know. In 2023, he did say <gasps> inner work, dig deep, very, very quickly. We have the unfruit cards here. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Sure. Very quickly. All right. The hottest thing anyone has ever told me? Uh, uttering my name three times. <laughs> When's that? <laughs> uh, my husband. Oh. <laughs> Before we were together. Okay. My sexual fantasy. Oh my gosh, uh, we don't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> what else do I want to explore sexually? Hmm. Ah, nako. Kulang din yung time. <laughs> Pwede bang balikan? <laughs> Babalikan kita dyan. And lastly... Ang corny ng answers ko. <laughs> <laughs> lastly, what do you want to impart to our viewers um, with everything that you've been through? Yes. And... How, who you are right now? Uh, the key to happiness is self-awareness. Dig deep. Uh, dig deep inside your mind. Dig deep inside your body parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, sorry to say this, but spread your legs. Yawn. <laughs> Bring a mirror. Check out your anatomy. There's no shame in that. There's no shame in getting to know yourself inside out. Yourself, your mind, your body, everything about you, you know, uh, get to know yourself, love yourself, respect yourself. And only then, pag taong buo ka na, can you find, uh, after you have loved yourself, it's a cliche, mm -hmm. can you really be fulfilled in loving others? Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, events, any Shows that yes, you want to I have promote. a podcast called You Can Do This, mm -hmm. where um, Doc Rica will soon guest. It's on Spotify. It drops every Friday. I'm also on all the platforms at Mirza Season, M-Y-R-Z-A-S-I-S-O-N. Okay, and lastly, Kalamwa, here. If you could have sex in any location in the world, where would it be? Mm. Top of mind. Oh my gosh. Uh... <laughs> Hirap naman. In all the amans in the world. Oh, all the amans in the world for years a season. Thank you very much. Thank catch, you. Catch our private convos weekly here on One News. You can also check out the long conversation on Spotify, YouTube, and Google Podcasts. I am Dr. Rika Cruz, and this is Private Convos. We are One News, all sides, all the time. Anong aman muna? First aman. Ah! <laughs> Aman muna sa Palawan. Uh, uh, tapos na yan. <laughs> Iba naman. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs>